Our next stop is Matthew O'Neill's garden. I've been looking forward to this one. Matthew has the best formal English garden I've ever seen outside of England. <laughs> Too much trouble to maintain. I'll take my informal New England garden any day. Oh my God! Matthew! No pulse. He's dead. Okay, Doc, Mrs. F, let me get this straight. When the tour group came into the garden, you found Mr. O'Neill just as he is, dead in the middle of the garden with a rose in his hand. That's right, Sheriff. Any idea what he died from, Doc? I haven't the slightest idea. I better take a look around. Mrs. F, you want to stick around and make sure I don't miss anything? Certainly, if you think I can be of some help. Sheriff, the E.W. on the shears we found could stand for Emily Wiseborough. She's lived in the house next door for as long as I can remember. Maybe she saw something. Time to pay her a visit. Emily is probably inside. Maybe we should have a look around before we knock. Come and get your milk! Good morning, Mrs. Wiseborough. Oh, good morning, Sheriff. Jessica, what are you doing here? Emily, something terrible happened next door. Matthew O'Neill was murdered. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, we found these garden shears at the scene with your initials on them. Are they yours? Well, yes, but I had no idea how they got there. What are you implying? No matter what some people might say, I had nothing to do with anything. Of course. But I was wondering if you saw or heard anything unusual next door this morning? Well, there was an argument. A bad one, by the sounds of it. You didn't happen to recognize who was doing the arguing. Matt, for one. The other sounded like Jack Delgado. You should have heard the insults they were trading. Well, that is helpful, thank you. Now, on a happier note, I saw you earned an honorable mention ribbon for your roses, Emily. Congratulations! Thank you. Our Garden Club president, Thomas Pickering, came by earlier to give it to me. What time was he here? Oh, I can't remember exactly. Somewhere around 11 or 11.30. Thanks, Mrs. Wiseborough. You've been very helpful. Sounds like we should track down Jack Delgado so we can ask him about this argument Emily overheard. Hello, Jack. Hi, Mrs. Fletcher. Sheriff, uh, what can I do for you? You can tell us what you were doing at Matthew O'Neill's house this morning. Why? He's dead, Jack. Probably murdered. And his neighbor says she overheard you and Matthew having an argument. Emily Wiseborough? That figures. She's never been one to mind her own business. But yeah, I was there. Uh, Matthew wanted me to do some last-minute landscaping before the garden contest got rolling. And? And Matthew didn't like the stones I used to edge his hydrangea beds. And he's the one who picked them out. He said he wasn't going to pay for the work I'd done. Emily said the argument became rather personal. Yeah, I guess it did. Matthew had a way of getting under people's skin. Look, 
I admit I yelled at the guy, but I didn't kill him. Did he have any enemies? Well, Emily, for one. Her cats were always coming over and using his gardens as a litter box. Matthew hated that. Uh-huh. Anyone else? Just Avery Donaldson, Matthew's arch-rival. Those two go head-to-head -head for first place in the garden competition, and every year for the past five years, Avery wins. If Avery always beat Matthew, that doesn't give him much of a motive to kill him. Losers have been known to kill winners, but seldom the other way around. I'm interested in hearing what Avery has to say about all this. Let's go find out. Hello, Jessica, Sheriff Metzger. I presume you're here because of Matthew O'Neill's death. Word travels fast. Well, let me save you some trouble. It's true that Matthew and I were rivals in everything from Halloween decorations to Christmas lights, but it was always a friendly rivalry. I wished him no ill. A friendly rivalry, in spite of Matthew's temper? Well, he was always pretty easy to get riled up. Don't take this the wrong way, Mr. Donaldson, but where were you around 11.30 this morning? That's easy. I was at Maine Coast Garden Supply, buying some mulch. Your garden is lovely, Avery. I've never seen anyone have so much success at growing tropical plants as far north as New England. The secret is my greenhouse. It allows the more tender plants to get a head start. You mind if we take a look around? Be my guest. Time to call it a day. Tomorrow morning I'd like to stop by the Garden Club office. Maybe Thomas Pickering can shed some light on things. Hello, Thomas. Are we interrupting you? Not at all, Jessica. Sheriff, come on in. Mr. Pickering, I was hoping you might remember what time you visited Mr. O'Neill to Judge's Garden. Based on the time displayed on Matthew's broken watch, it's possible that you were the last person to see him alive. I think it was around 11 or so yesterday morning. I can't quite remember the exact time, but I can assure you that Matthew was very much alive when I left. Did you know about the rivalry between Mr. O'Neill and Avery Donaldson? Well, of course, everyone in the Garden Club knew about that, but I don't think Matthew ever got upset over it. What did he get upset over? I think Matthew was more irritated with Emily Wiseborough because she let her cats run rampant across his garden. That and the fact that the woman has a streak of paranoia a mile wide. She accused Matthew of spreading lies about her on more than one occasion. What sort of lies? Once she complained that Matthew told the other garden club members that she liked to garden in her bathrobe. Another time she accused him of starting a rumor about her stealing plant cuttings. Things like that.
So according to Thomas, Avery and Matthew were never bitter enemies. But I still think we should follow up on Avery's alibi. Yeah, who knows? He could have altered that credit card receipt any number of ways to make it look like he was at the garden center at the time the murder took place. Good morning, Carol. How are you? Better now. Finding Matthew dead like that yesterday was quite a shock. Of course. Sheriff Metzger and I spoke with Avery Donaldson yesterday. He said that at the time Matthew was killed, he was here shopping. You wouldn't happen to have the original copy of his credit card receipt, would you? I think so. It's somewhere around here. You're welcome to look for it. This place gets to be such a mess, and I never seem to have the time to organize it. Has Seth made any progress in determining how Matthew died? I'll ask him in a minute. He and I are going to have another look around Matthew's garden to see if we can find anything that might help. The time of Matthew's death does match the time on his broken watch. 11.30 yesterday morning. And I've determined that he was poisoned. That makes sense. The blue tinge on his lips and fingernails indicated it. What I don't know is what kind of poison killed him. Could have been a lot of things. Well, I'm hoping that we'll find some new clues to narrow the list of possibilities. Judging by what Thomas Pickering said earlier, Emily didn't tell us the whole story about how she and Matthew got along. Mort and I should probably speak with her further. Sheriff, take a look at these photos I just found. Looks like Emily made a hobby out of watching the comings and goings of her neighbors. It appears that her cats have gotten into her collection. There are photos all over. We should see how many others she's got around here. What are you doing with those? Just having a look around, Mrs. Wiseborough. You've got quite a talent for photography. 
Did you keep tabs on who came and went next door? Maybe I did. It seemed a prudent thing to do. Matthew was always telling lies, always plotting against me. What was Avery Donaldson doing in Matthew's garden while Matthew was out? I don't know what he was up to, that Avery. He's probably told you things about me, too. Don't believe them. Uh, okay, ma'am. We were curious, Emily, as to why you showed so little emotion at the news that your next-door neighbor had just been murdered. Well, if you must know, Matthew and I didn't get along particularly well. In fact, we weren't even speaking to each other. Thomas Pickering said Matthew was upset because your cats were trespassing in his garden. What? Ha! <laughs> I'm the one who deserves to be upset. Maybe my cats did roam next door, but Matthew didn't have to introduce a horde of earwigs into my rose garden to get even. What exactly are you accusing me of? This conversation is over. She's a real piece of work. Thomas was right about her paranoia. Paranoia or no, she did see Avery next door, and we need to find out what he was doing there. Avery, Emily Weisborough took a picture of you in Matthew O'Neill's garden mere days before he was murdered. What were you doing there? Nothing. I mean, I was there, but I was just trying to find out why Matthew was sneaking around my garden. Matthew was over here without your knowledge? I'm almost certain he was stealing seeds from my tropicals. I found footprints all over the floor of my greenhouse. It was probably a futile effort to copy my success and beat me in the garden competition next year. I see. Speaking of footprints, was Jack Delgado here yesterday morning? As a matter of fact, he was. Now there is someone who could have killed Matthew. What makes you say that? Well, apparently Matthew refused to pay his bill, and Jack was pretty upset over it. Yes, we've heard about that. Emily may be a snoop, but we've found Jack's footprints in every garden we visited. Maybe he can shed some more light on the situation. Taking his gloves back to him is as good an excuse as any to speak with him again. Jack doesn't appear to be around, but I think I'll wait. Something I can help you with? Hello, Jack. Is this your flyer for this year's garden contest? Yep. It says here, sponsored by Humboldt Chemical. Yeah, they put up $5,000 cash and $5,000 worth of free Humboldt Chemical garden products for the winner. My goodness, that's quite a generous prize. Not only that, the winner gets to compete in a New England-wide competition where the prizes are even bigger. I suppose that would explain why Matthew and Avery were spying on each other, despite their rivalry, just being a friendly one. Oh, it wasn't so friendly, Jessica. Not with all that prize money and free gardening products at stake. Once Matthew even asked me to tell him some of Avery's secrets, but I didn't want to get in the middle of it. Oh, before I forget, Avery asked me to return your leather gloves to you? Those aren't my gloves. They aren't. Avery said you left them at his garden yesterday morning. No. Those gloves look pretty new. If they came from Main Coast Garden Center, maybe Carol remembers who she sold them to. Good thinking. I'll go ask her. Miss Sullivan, do you sell this brand of leather work gloves here? Yes, I do. Why? We were wondering if you might remember who bought this particular pair recently. Uh, I don't know, but I can probably find the invoice. I'm still looking for Avery's invoice, too. It's been so crazy here, and I'm short-handed. If I come across either one, I'll let you know, Sheriff. Thanks. Are you okay, Carol? 
not really. Things have been so crazy. I have customers coming in for the latest seed shipment, but the packets have gotten lost. Well, why don't you take a moment to look for that invoice while Mort and I get this sorted out? Oh, Jessica, bless you. You have no idea how much you helped me out here today. I have bad news, though. I still haven't found that invoice. I'll keep looking, though. I promise. That's fine, Carol. I noticed that you're still waiting on that mulch order. Yes, I'm afraid so. Add it to my list of worries. I've got customers clamoring for it left and right. There you are. The final toxicology results from Matthew's autopsy have come in. The poison was definitely ricin. Are you sure? Absolutely. It must have been introduced through the small punctures I found in his hand, since there was no trace of any poison in his stomach and no other visible wounds. The rose in Matthew's hand... Maybe the punctures were inflicted by the thorns on the rose he was holding when we found him. They certainly could have been. Kind of makes the ownership of those reinforced leather gardening gloves Avery found all the more important. I wonder if it's possible to trace a flower back to the person who grew it. It is, if the flower is fairly rare. And the person to ask about this flower would be Thomas Pickering. Any chance you could tell us what kind of rose this is, Mr. Pickering? Hmm. It's a Verona rose. Very rare. How many people in Cabot Cove grow Verona roses? As far as I know, just one. Emily Wiseboro. She's actually gained some notoriety among rose enthusiasts because of her Veronas. Is that why she earns at least an honorable mention in the garden competition every year? It's fair to say so, and she really does an excellent job with them. Would you mind if we poke around a little while we're here? Not at all. So Emily's the only one who grows Verona roses in Cabot Cove. Don't jump to any conclusions, Sheriff. If she grew the murder weapon in her garden, she has a lot of explaining to do, starting now. Emily, do you mind if we take a look at your rose bushes? Go ahead. They are award-winning, you know. Mrs. Wisebro, we know that the rose that was used to kill Matthew O'Neill came from your garden. The one we found in his hand exactly matches the ones you grow. I didn't kill Matthew. The evidence points to you, I'm afraid. You had means, motive, and opportunity. I can prove I didn't kill him. I was on the phone with my sister in California at the time that Matthew was killed. The telephone records will bear this out, Sheriff. Besides, anyone could have come into her yard, and where would she have obtained the ricin? 
You got a point there. Emily, did you ever have any reason to suspect that the garden competition was being rigged in Avery's favor? I always suspected that Thomas and Avery had some sort of special arrangement that kept Avery in first place every year. What made you think this? Well, that newspaper article you found, for one thing. After Thomas retired from Humboldt Chemicals, he used his connections with the company to increase the competition's prize and prestige in New England. He neglected to tell us he used to work for Humboldt Chemicals. Is that why he was made president of the Garden Club? Yes, it's also why our friendly garden exhibition turned into the fiercely contested event it is today. Everyone's spreading tales about everyone else. With so much at stake in the garden competition, it would be surprising if there wasn't cheating involved. And it all started when Thomas became president of the club. We need to talk to him and find out if Emily's claim that Thomas and Avery had the competition rigged is true. Okay, Mr. Pickering, level with us. How did Avery Donaldson really win first place in the garden competition year after year? His garden is consistently the best. That's all there is to it. Thomas, what exactly did you do before you came to Cabot Cove? I used to be a chemist. Why didn't you tell us that before? I didn't think it was relevant. I'm afraid it is relevant, Thomas, since Matthew was murdered with ricin, a poison that was chemically extracted from castor beans. And that's something you'd have the knowledge to accomplish. My work at Humboldt Chemicals is what got me interested in how chemistry could improve gardening. But it isn't a reason to suspect me of murder. Besides, I don't have access to castor beans. He has a point. Maybe we better speak with Jack again. It seems he might be the one with the real temper, not Matthew. Jack, did Thomas Pickering ever do any chemical work for Avery Donaldson that you know of? Ha! <laughs> Thomas doesn't do any work for anybody. We know you were at both Matthew's and Emily's places the morning of the murder. You had the opportunity to grab one of Emily's roses to use as a murder weapon to kill Matthew over your unpaid bill. Or maybe because he criticized the work you'd done. Come on, Sheriff. My skin's thicker than that. Besides, at the time Matthew was killed, I was dropping off five bags of mulch over at Avery's place. Let's hope Carol's had some luck finding Avery's invoice so we can find out what he really bought that morning. Carol, have you been able to find those invoices? I haven't even had a chance to look. You're welcome to see if you can find them, though.
Everything is starting to make sense, and I think I know who killed Matthew O'Neill. But there's one last thing I need to check out first. I just need to find the proof that my theory is correct. I'll just lend Avery a hand by taking down these leftover decorations for him, and take a little look around the place while I'm at it. oil plants? I thought so. Jessica, what are you doing here? Confirming a theory, Avery, that the ricin that killed Matthew O'Neill was made from castor beans grown in your garden. You imported these plants from Florida specifically for that purpose. That's preposterous! I have no idea how to make ricin from castor beans. Besides, you seem to have forgotten that I have an ironclad alibi courtesy of the Maine Coast Garden Center. I know that. That's why you needed an accomplice, Thomas Pickering. Between his background as a former chemist and your access to the raw materials for ricin, you made a perfect team. And while you were busy establishing your alibi at the garden center, Thomas was delivering a ricin-tainted rose to Matthew O'Neill. You're correct that Thomas and I were a team, but the only thing we're guilty of is rigging the garden contest. My exotic plants need a staggering amount of fertilizers, pesticides, and other chemical help to thrive in a New England climate. So we struck up a little arrangement. Yes. Thomas made sure you won the competition every year, ensuring you received a generous supply of Humboldt Chemical Garden products. And in return, you gave him the cash part of the prize. It was worth giving Thomas the $5,000 every year to maintain the scheme. Much richer prizes awaited me if my garden advanced to the New England regional competition and won there. But the arrangement never included murder. Not true. I think Matthew became suspicious when you began winning the competition year after year. Suspicious enough to threaten to start an inquiry and have Thomas removed as president of the Garden Club. If that happened, your winning streak and everything that came with it would be over. That was your motive in silencing Matthew. And Thomas? What was his motive? Thomas didn't want to lose his position as president of the club, or his $5,000 annual bribe. Perhaps more importantly, he was afraid he would face censure, and possibly legal trouble, for fixing the competition. What I think happened the morning of the murder is that while you were establishing your alibi at the garden center, Thomas was making his rounds judging gardens. He went to Emily's garden first and took her shears and one of her roses with him when he left. Being careful to wear gloves, he painted the thorns with ricin. It takes only a minuscule amount to kill and went next door to Matthew's garden. He left the rose for Matthew to pick up knowing that the thorns would prick his hand and deliver the fatal poison. He also left behind Emily's garden shears to cast suspicion on her. Finally, Thomas went on to judge your garden and left his gloves here so no one else in the competition would see him with them. That wasn't part of the plan. I didn't know who those gloves belonged to. Thomas thought the whole thing up and threatened to expose me as a fraud if I didn't go along with it. That's enough, Avery. I figured you would panic and sell me out. That's why I need to silence you. And now that you figured everything out, Jessica, I'm afraid you'll have to go too. Hold it right there, Pickering. Put that gun on the ground, slowly. Did you hear it all? Everything. More than enough to put both Thomas and Avery away for a very long time. I guess this whole matter just proves the old saying. You reap what you sow.